pie. I like pie. <laughs> yes, I do, with the caveat that there are certain types of pie that are not my favorites. Um, <laughs> but I would say a Dutch apple pie is probably my favorite. A key lime pie, um, very, very good. Um, the monstrous mega chocolate things that my wife gets is not necessarily my favorite. Um, I prefer chocolate as a garnish, not as a, as a flavor unto itself. Like, I love vanilla ice cream with fudge, but I hate chocolate ice cream. So, so there you go. So, you know, the, the, the pies that are all the, you know, chocolate with this on top of chocolate that, with chocolate with this dribbled over it, a little bit, a uh, little bit too much. All right. Uh, another question right here. Music. Music. Um, very eclectic taste. Um, I, I do listen to a little bit of everything, um, except uh, country, unless that's country done by Metallica. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they, they have a very nice country song on, um, on uh, Garage Inc., which I love. So I can't say no country. And I do like you know some of the old classic stuff. But uh, mostly you find me, when I'm working, listening to, um, listening to background music, piano music, um, new age uh, soundtracks, unless it's a really intense action sequence whereupon I'll turn on the appropriate music. Usually then we're getting Daft Punk or, um, or Metallica. Um, when I'm driving, I like driving music, which usually means um, classic rock, so Deep Purple, um, stuff like that. Um, I, I do um, have a fondness for metal, so you know um, I, I will turn on Rammstein when I'm driving along in my vehicle with things like this, or Dragon Force, or some of these guys. So, um, like I said, pretty eclectic. I'm very excited for the new Daft Punk album to come out with uh, with the next Tron um, CD or the next Tron movie, and you know Eiffel 65. They're actually European stuff, not the only stuff we got over here. Yeah, so. So I listen to a little bit of everything. Um, I turn on Pandora and see where it takes me um, a lot of times. So, All right. Uh, what time do we have? We can probably go just a few more minutes in here and then move outside. So qu any other questions? Right here. I know you probably said before that you won't take over for George Martin if he does. Can you do it if I buy you a box of Eldrazi? <laughs> a box of magic cards? <laughs> Um, the question was um, George R. R. Martin. Number one, we shouldn't really even joke about this because we, uh, my friends and I joked about it with Robert Jordan, and then we felt terrible. <laughs> <laughs> and George is a very nice guy. He's been very nice to me. Um, I would not take over for George Martin. I would take over for pretty much anyone else. The reason being, um, I said yes to the Wheel of Time because I had read the Wheel of Time book since I was 14 um, or 15, and I loved the series legitimately, and I had read the books multiple times. Um, they were a huge influence on me, um, and there are, there just aren't any authors like that that are writing series like that. You know, I do think Martin is a brilliant writer. He's too brutal for me. I'll be, <laughs> I'll be straight up with you. Um, you know, when I got to the end of the first book and what he has done to Eddard, I'm just like, ah, I can't take this. Um, and so I actually prefer George's short stories because the short burst I can take take it and I don't get so used and attached to the characters that they, you know, he stomps on my face and, and uh, makes me end up loving, um, you know, um, loving Jamie Lannister or things like this. He just jerks you all over the place. So I would be the wrong writer to write on those, to be perfectly honest. There are great writers out there that would make uh, a great, you know, if it were to happen that he wanted to choose someone. You know, I mean, if he went to Joe Abercrombie, that would be a, a much better choice, I think, than me. So I would say no for those reasons. Um, you know, I just, I, 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 I love The Wheel of Time, and I could legitimately say that. And I really couldn't say that for pretty much anyone else. I mean, I grew up loving David Eddings' work, but then I got older, and, you know, it, it, it didn't work the same way. Uh, I'll go back and, and I'll read his stuff and still love it, but it's more of a fondness as in my childhood youth sort of thing. Whereas The Wheel of Time, every time I would reread as an adult, I'd be like, oh wow, this is written on all age levels and for all age levels, and I still find things and I love them. And so, um, yeah. I, I give long answers to simple questions. I should have just said no, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lots of Eldrazi is very tempting. Um, other questions? Right back here. Okay. Okay, yeah, there we go. My friend just wanted me to ask, and she wanted me to ask about Lantris. Okay. Right. She wanted to know the, about the shards, or the shards on Atlantis. Yes. She wanted to know what, the, what they were. She wanted to know what they were? I haven't answered that yet. That's a okay. very big question. Uh, people are still wondering what they are. There is a very big clue in the Way of Kings if you look in the right place. 
Okay? It's it's Which page is it? Um if, if you look in the way of kings, there are certain things in the way of kings that um that most people are just going to ignore who haven't read the other things. And but if you pay attention, you will see um, direct reference to something that happened um, in Elantris. Okay. So, <laughs> so there you go. Um, yeah. You will also find references to White Sand and Dragon Steel, neither of which have been published yet, um, which, but are in the continuity. They're actually chronologically before this book, and so they have already happened. So someday I will publish and um, write out those books for you, but there are references to them in this book. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, surprise! Um, anyway, there you go. You can tell her that. I will tell her. Okay, one more question, then we're going we're gonna to move outside and let the uh, bookstore still. So right here, we'll do yours first outside of Tim, right? now. What? Chris. Chris, that's what I meant, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just misheard me, yeah. Is uh, uh, Sinane in... Is she all okay, great? <laughs> See where this is going. Is she shielded in any way, or is she ex choosing her full? Is she demonstrating her full? Oh, ability? okay, okay. Um, Sindane is demonstrating her full abilities. Okay. I will not wrap with that. I will give you the answer. All right. <laughs> there you go. Um, so wait, uh, we've got to we've got to move outside. Oh, we've we have to wait for him. Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll do we'll do heads. That was a short one. We'll do heads and then we'll move outside. All right. What do you look to improve upon the most in your writing? Right? Um, right now, basically, the thing I think I'm weakest at is my prose, just sentence by sentence. Um, I hope you don't do this because it'll throw you out of the story, but if you pay attention, there are certain phrases and words that I repeat too often. Um, it happens to a lot of authors, um, and I, te I, I tend to be a little bit more prone to that than most authors. Um, and so I actually, that's one thing I'm really working on. I have a kill list. <laughs> of words that actually after I finish um, a, one of the later drafts, I do a search for all of those with, um, and just replace with the same word, but I leave track changes on on words. So what it does, it turns them all red. Um, and then as I'm going through, I, and then the kill list is now like 15 words long. And so during my, um, my, my, um, my last polish on prose, I'm looking for those. And I still think, I, I still discover lots of them that I overuse. Um, so I'd say that's my biggest um, weakness right now. Um, one of the things I specifically worked on in the way of Kings um, was to um, I loved Warbreaker. It was a great experiment. I don't know that I blended the humor and the drama quite right. It, sometimes I feel like it's just too silly and then straight into genre uh, ju uh, into um, drama and I'm not sure if I got that balance right so you know one of the things I worked on in Warbreaker is I wanted to make my humor um, a level better than it had been before. Um, and now I want to blend it in more and make it fit a little bit better. Um, one of the other things I'm working on is making sure Robert Jordan was extremely subtle. Um, he was extremely good at foreshadowing across a large series, and I've never done that before because my longest series is three books. Um, unless you count, you know, all the books as one series, which kind of I do. Um, <laughs> but, um, but um, I do, I am trying to learn some of that subtlety. Um, that's one of the things I'm practicing. And that's hard for me because I just like, like to come out and just say everything to everybody. They ask me a question, I'm like, oh yeah, it's this, and I go on for 20 minutes. Rather than saying Rafa when I probably should say Rafa a lot of the time. So we're going to know all the answers by book three. What's that? Yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I'm, hoping, I'm hoping that you won't know all the answers by book three because um, then you will have seven more books that, um, that get uh, <laughs> with, uh, twiddling our thumbs or whatnot. <laughs> All right, we are going to move outside so that the nice bookstore can close down their store. You are welcome to take off, or you are welcome to hang out and chat with me a little bit longer.